This video is going to try and show you that you should not always pick subjects just to maximize your IB marks. And to do that, I'm going to introduce you to two people, Ross and Rachel. You may have heard of them. Anyway, so Ross and Rachel took the IB and these are their scores. Okay, so Ross got a 38 and Rachel got a 41. Okay, with only this information, right, if I asked you which one was smarter, which one would you say? Most likely, you'd say Rachel, right? Because she got higher marks than Ross. Okay, let's add a bit more information. These were their subjects and these were their scores. Okay, in addition to that, these are, they're both trying to enter theoretically a course uh, on computer science with these requirements. And there's only one spot left at the university. Okay, so that's the situation I put them in. Okay, let's ask a couple of questions. Who got the higher score? Obviously, that was Rachel. Who met the requirements, though? Ross. And who had more relevant subjects? Well, that answer's pretty easy. Answering these questions, really, even though Rachel had the higher score, Ross had the requirements met. So, theoretically, if there was only one spot left at the university, which student would the university pick? Obviously, it's Ross, right? Now, you may think this is obvious, but a lot of people, stupid people like me, take subjects just to maximize their IB score. And they think that since they have such a high score, any uni would accept them. You know, you could get a 45, but if you do not have those required subjects for your diploma program, it's very unlikely that you'd get into your course. So I was one of those stupid people. I didn't take math HL because of that. I didn't make... Well, I wasn't trying to maximize my score, but I didn't know I wanted to do comp sci at that time. So I didn't take math HL, and because of that, it made it really hard for me to enter a good computer science, um, at a, to major in computer science at a good university, because every single decent university requires a 5 in HL, and I got a 6 at SL. So even though I had the required marks, right, I had way more than required marks. The required marks were what? It was 37, if I'm not mistaken. Even though I, I had a lot more than required marks, I didn't have the required subjects. And that's a big problem because the marks mean nothing if you don't have the subjects. You can't major at physics in Oxford if your HLs were visual art, language B and English lit and you still got a 43, right? You can't do that. You need your required subjects. So required subjects trump your total number of points. A person who got 38 and took all these hard as hell subjects did, in a way, a harder IB program than a person who got a 40 and took quote on quote soft subjects. Now, what do I mean by soft subjects? I'll give you an example. The London School of Economics, if you go to their website, right, it's a, obviously it's a top university. Uh, you go to their website, they have a section on non preferred subjects. And both business management and film were non preferred subjects. They recognize, right? that these subjects aren't as hard to score high than things like math and physics HL. Now, I'm not trying to say that you should always take these hard subjects. Think about it. If a person, let's say, wanted to major at art in university, right? He would, let's say his requirements were art and lit HL. For his course, right, like, like Ross in my early example, computer science wasn't required, but his seven in the subject surely added possible weight in his application, right? It added positive weight. So, because it was relevant. Taking math HL and other hard subjects when you want to major in art isn't really relevant, right? It isn't going to add that much credibility to that person's application if it isn't connected to their degree as much as their required and related subjects. So in that case, you don't need to take harder subjects if it's not required. And then you're free to take easier subjects because, and I think honestly that that's smart because if a person focuses mainly only on required subjects and fills the rest of his subjects with relatively easier subjects, he's smart because he's freeing up time to focus on the subjects he requires. So as long as that person isn't taking, you know, relatively easy subjects to purely maximize their IB marks, then it's okay. The point is your required subjects matter more than your marks. And now this brings me to another point. You know how sometimes you'll meet a person and he'll say, you know, I got a 42 and you're like, whoa, this guy is crazy. And it's true. I mean, 42 is an amazing score, right? Because regardless of your subject, a 42 is a 42. And to get, you know, you'd, you'd have to get a number of sevens in your subjects. 
and even though some subjects are easier than others they're still hard subjects right so yes for getting a 42 is a great accomplishment but that's not enough information for you right if a person has filled his subjects with again relatively easier subjects just so he could get high marks right and let's say that person who got a 42 you compare him with the guy who got a 7 in math hl 7 in physics 7 in chem but he graduated with 38 right Think about which one really had to put in more effort and you know had to be theoretically more smart than the other person. According to me, the guy who got the 38 because his subjects were 10x harder. I consider my friends who got lower than me but took harder subjects than me to be smarter than me. Yes, I still consider myself quite smart because I got 40, right? It's still a good accomplishment, like I said. Um, you know, even 38, 37, they're all good accomplishments, but it still depends on the breakdown of your subjects. You see, the IB is different for different people, right? That's why two people who got the same IB score for 40 have different abilities based on their subject choices. Uh, and universities recognize this. That's the overall, that's why the overall mark is not as important as meeting those requirements and scoring high in the subjects that matter. So, uh, through all my rambling, if you had to take away anything from this video, it would be that when you choose your subjects, keep this in mind. Don't be that guy that picks subjects just to maximize his marks, right? That's a mistake that you're going to pay for later. Pick your required subjects, meet your requirements, and if possible, take relevant subjects based on your requirements to increase your application. Also, the next time you meet a person with a high mark, look for the breakdown of his marks, and that'll give you an indicator of how hard the IB was for him relative to you. Okay, hopefully that helped. Okay.